Hi everybody, how are you? It's Dr. Emily, functional podiatrist and human movement specialist. Today's video is all about a long second toe. What does it mean? What can you do? And what is the foreshadowing of some possible injuries that you may be at risk for? Now, a long second toe is often referred to as a Morton's toe, or it's uh, said to be a Morton's foot type. And what this means is that your toe is actually not longer, but the metatarsal or the long bone in the foot is actually longer. The longer the length of that second metatarsal starts to push that second toe out a little bit further. So it is actually a long second metatarsal but the result is that it presents that your second toe is a longer than your first and your third. What this means is that when you are in shoes, if the shoe is not properly fitted, you run the risk of pushing your toe into the shoe, leading to a contracture or hammer toe formation. Now that contracture could be at the farthest joint, which is technically called a mallet toe, or it could be at the closest joint to the foot, which is called a hammer toe, or both of those joints could contract in and that would be a claw toe. Regardless of the joint that is contracting, when you have a Morton's toe or a long second toe, this can lead to the hammer toe formation that causes pain or a callus formation underneath the second metatarsal head or underneath that second joint. Prolonged pressure from a contracture and the callus or what's called retrograde pressure can lead to a sprain or irritation to the ligament that stabilizes that second joint. That ligament is called your plantar plate. So people with a Morton's toe or Morton's foot type are at risk of experiencing a plantar plate tear or plantar plate stress. Another common symptom that you can experience when you have a Morton's toe is that you are at a greater risk of experiencing a stress fracture of your second metatarsal. The second metatarsal in the foot happens to take the greatest amount of stress of all of the bones in the foot, but when you have a longer second met, it is at a little bit higher risk of even more pressure or that stress fracture. So what are some things that you can do to help stabilize that Morton's toe and stabilize the second joint of the foot, second MPJ? You can tape the toes together. If you tape two and three together, kind of like a buddy splint and down, that will stabilize that second MPJ. You can use a metatarsal pad. I recommend that patients buy shoes that are fitted towards their second toe, not their first, where most people fit their shoes to their first toe or the great toe. When you have a long second toe, you actually want to size your shoes to the length of that second toe. If you feel like you get too much moving around in the shoe or you're sliding forward and back, you can actually change the lacing of your shoe so it's a little bit more snug along the upper part of the foot. You could put lamb's wool in the front of the shoe as well. And then some of my other favorite ones include a metatarsal pad, which can be placed on the bottom of the foot or a U-pad. One of the other options, if you do have a long second toe, which I don't recommend, but you can do is a surgery to shorten your second toe. This would allow not just a cosmetic appearance to your foot, but it would actually take some of the pressure off of that second met when you are in a shoe that is too short. So you would avoid the stress of the hammer toe. Again, in summary, a long second toe, which is a Morton's foot or a Morton's toe, increases your risk of getting a hammer toe, retrograde pressure, calluses, pain under the second metatarsal head. You can also get a plantar plate tear or could potentially get stress fractures in your second metatarsal. Some of the biggest tips is wear shoes that are a little bit longer. If your feet move around, put lamb's wool in the front of the shoe. You can tape your toes together and down. You can get a U-pad, metatarsal pad, or you could potentially shorten your second toe. I hope that you enjoyed. If you'd like to learn more about my approach with patients and functional podiatry, please check out dremilysplickle.com. Thank you.